برای آزادی هم بزنان عزیز خوش آمدید از طرف برگزار کنندگان این تجمع انجمن خانواده های پرواز جان باستگان پرواز پی اس 752 و گروه آشمان ایران از حمایت و همراهی تک تک شما تشکر میکنم در کنار هم با امید ایران آزاد از ایستادگی و مبارزه دست نخواهیم کشید و به زودی شاهد روزی خواهیم بود که آزادی ایران را در کنار هم جشن میگیریم
officials of the Islamic regime and their families.
I was only 22 years old when the Islamic Republic Morality Police detained me on charges of immodest clothing. Several hours later, I was in the hospital with signs of head trauma. I died on September 16, 2022. On my greatest stone it reads, Gina, dear, you will not die. You will become our symbol. You will become our symbol. Dear friends, allies, and fellow Iranians, we have gathered here today on the first anniversary of Mahsa Gina Amini's murder to commemorate the lives that have been the last during the past year and reaffirm our commitment to the women of Iran who remain at the forefront of an unequal battle against persecution and discrimination. The young Iranians who stand bravely with their bare hands against the beach of Ukraine, the people of Iran are armed with the idea behind the powerful slogan, Women, Life, Freedom. Today, Mahsa Amini and hundreds of other brave Iranians have become the symbol of our revolution to play strength with democracy, oppression with justice, and discrimination with equal rights. 36 five days have passed since, the, since that fateful day when Mahsa was murdered at the hands of the regime. 365 days have passed and more than 500 killed. 365 days and more than 800 injured, 10,000 in prison, a year of summary executions, 365 days of constant worry, of constant fear, and constant pain, 365 days and 44 years of reign of terror by regime whose only means of survival is violence, corruption, bloodshed, and injustice a deep hatred for everything that Iran and Iranians stand for. But 365 years ago, we swear an oath. We swear that we will fight lies and the truth. We swear that we will take up the charge and march on the wheel all our might. We swear we would not falter nor fall. We swear we would not forget nor forgive until justice prevails. We swear that we will no longer be bystanders in the face of injustice, that we will stand united in honor of those who were taken from us. We swear by the song of Nika, by the laughter of Serena, by the dance of Polanu, and by Chian's rainbow. We swear an oath. We swear that in our right surrender of prophets, us to fight today our love for one another, we take the past for tomorrow. And together, we will shout in the future of our nation, a future in which our ideals regarding the rights of women, our rights to life, free from tyranny, shall be the cornerstone of free and democratic Iran, the future in which the people of Iran stand hand in hand, woman and man, young and old, regardless of identity or orientation, truth and truth, balance and law, Arab and Fars, regardless of religion or political belief, with dignity and mutual respect, together we swear an oath, and together we will pray. This is our future. This is our destiny. Woman, life, freedom. Thank you, Abba. We are all very good the dedication of so many volunteers who have helped to make this important event possible. Allow me to extend my heartfelt appreciation to some remarkable individuals here with us today. Mr. Francis Sorbara, the Member of Parliament, and Mr. Chris Lover, the Member of Parliament. Your support and commitment to the Women's Life Freedom Revolution in Iran is not only important to us here, but also to the millions of Iranians who are risking their lives every day for a common cause. I would like to invite our first speaker, a board member of the Association of Families of Flight K-75 Victims, Dr. Hamed Ismaili.
اینجا میان سوپ باران آشنایانند و پیشانند و مردمانی هم که چون من دارنده این نام را هرگز ندیدند و نمیدانند اما هر کس که اینجا هست با خشم و فریادی گرفت در مشت میداند که او را کشت در گرد گور تازه جمع سوپ باران است دیگر کسی اینجا نمی پرسد این خفته در خاک از کجا و از کدامان است میدانند او فرزند ایران است یک سال پیش در چنین روزی من ساج ایران می دختر بیست و سال یعنی سبت که به تهران سفر کرده بود با اتحام واقعی پوشش نامناسب توسط جمهوری اسلامی دستگیر شد و به قرد بسید حشمی امین دنیا را فرا گرفت و از آن روز محسا امینی دختر ایران شد پس از آن جنبشی عظیم حمید و مترقی در ایران جرقه زد که امروز همه دنیا آن را به اسم انقلاب زن زندگی آزادی می شناسند زنان شجاعان روسری از سر برداشتن جوانان بسیاری به این انقلاب پیوستن هنرمندان خود را به سطح اول جنبش رساندن و نهادهای سنفی، احزاب و فعالین بسیاری در داخل و خارج از ایران از این انقلاب حمایت کردند. جهان به احترام ایستادگی و شجاعت ایرانیان کلاه از سر برداشت و در ابتدا غرب هم ناگزیر شد در حمایت از سرکوبگران و جنایت کاران تردید کند اما سرکوب ها در ایران بیرحمان ادامه پیدا کرد دست کم هفت نفر از فرزندان در ایران ادام شدند بیش از 600 نفر از به دست جمهوری اسلامی به بعد بسیدن چشمان زیادی با شدی که مستقیم نابینا شد مسمومیت های شیمی های سریالی به دست جمهوری اسلامی رقم خورد هزاران نفر از جمله هنرمندان خانواده های دادها و مقترزین به زندان افتادند و در نهایت جمهوری اسلامی با توسل به چین و روسیه و در اقداماتی خلاف منافع ملی تلاش کرد قبل را متقاعد کند که انقلاب نخواهد شد اما چنین نیست و نخواهد آنچه مهم است آنچه مهم است تا دولت های دموکراتیک و مردم دنیا بدانند این است که مردم ایران از جمهوری اسلامی گذر کردند و دیگر این حکومت جهنمی را نمیخواهند ما به سوپ نکست ایماری اما مقاومت میکنیم ما از آدار صد ها هزاران کودک و نو جوان و جوان هستیم آری اما تبل رسفای این حکومت را همچنان خواهیم نباد بر خواسته های متعدد خود که در این سال ها تکرار شدند اصرار میبرزیم یک کانادا نباید جای عوامل جمهوری اسلامی و خانواده هایشان باشد مسئله دخالت خارجی جمهوری اسلامی در کانادا جدی است ما همچنان انتظار داریم نمایندگان و وابستگان جمهوری اسلامی در این کشور انصر نامطلوب شناخته شده از این کشور اخراج شوند دو 
سپاه پاسداران انقلاب اسلامی یک نهاد تروریستی است و جایی در آینده در ایران آینده نخواهد داشت این سازمان را در لیست سازمان های تروریستی بگذاریم سه پذیرش و حمایت از پناهندگان و مجروحان ایرانی در کشورهای همسایه ایران وظیفه همه ما به دولت های دموکراتیک می گوییم به جای ویزا دادن به مقامات امروز و دیروز جمهوری اسلامی با درخواست پذیرش بسیاری از پناهندگان ایرانی موافقت کنیم چهار نهادهای ایرانی در خارج از کشور برای کمک به برقراری اینترنت آزاد نیاز به حمایت دارند به ایرانیان برای دسترسی به اینترنت آزاد یاری رسانی پنج آزادی فوری و بدون غیر و شرط خانواده های دادها و سایر زندانیان خواسته همه ماست از دولت های دموکراتیک می خواهیم اگر بنا دارند رابطه خود را با جمهوری اسلامی حفظ کنند آزادی زندانیانی سیاسی و دادخواهان باید اصلی ترین پاسه آنها باشد انقلاب زن زندگی آزادی با خود امید بسیار آورده است امیدواری به رسیدن به آزادی امیدواری به ادالت اجتماعی امیدواری برای ادالت برای قربانیان امیدواری برای حل مشکلات بغرنج محیط زیستی این انقلاب به دست ایرانیان به نتیجه خواهد رسید و پشتیبانی دولت های دموکراتیک می تواند به رسیدن آینده ای روشن در ایران و منطقه خاور میانه یاری رساند در فصل تازه‌ای که پیش روی ماست نهاد سازی و تقویت نهادهای مدنی سنفی و سیاسی بیشترین اهمیت را دارد نهادها و احساب می توانند تغییر را رقم بزنند و پس از آن از دموکراسی محافظت کنند ما امروز نام تک تک قربانیان را فریاد زدیم و می خواهیم ادالت برای تک تک آنها و برای یک یک کسانی که در چهل و پنج سال گذشته بیرحمان کشته شدن اجرا شود ما این مسیر را هر چند که طولانی و جان فرسا باشد ادامه می دهیم تا روزی بچه های ایران در آزادی نفس بکشند و ادالت رویایی دست یافتنی باشد ما برای آن روز می جنگیم و دست از سلاش نمی کشیم ما نفراموش می کنیم ما نفراموش می کنیم بریم آن دور آوازانه شد بریم I want to say thank you first of all to the organizers, the, me the members of families of victims of PS 752 for putting together this really important event of keeping the memory of their loved ones alive and the memory of us and me alive. Mohsen, Baral, Hamid, thank you, mercy, and we are very sincere for your efforts. I want to acknowledge I'm here with other people who have a very strong belief in this cause, belief in the cause of justice and accountability. Those include some of my colleagues at the federal level, so that is Parliamentary Secretary Rob Oliphant, that is Member of Parliament Ali Asasi, and proud member of the Iranian community, which is here today, and former elected representative Dr. Reza Zarini. So thank you for being here also again today. I'm quite struck by what I see. Uh, I see the images, I hear your enthusiasm, and I just hear your frustration. I hear your anger, I hear your demands. I hear the morale of the day, very good. I may be a little bit less because the Parsi is definitely working for us. But I hear what you are looking for, 
when the kids tell you that yes, I need to have it, but I don't need to have it before. In the art of her, what you have is a person who came to this country with a red flag, a person who experiences as a person who came to this you have a person who became a human rights lawyer. You have a person who took that approach to his work as a parliamentarian. It's funny because sometimes people say, Arif, that's a good person for you. They say, actually, no, my family is sort of from India and it's that, uh, and we ended up here. But although I can be confused with being Persian, you never confuse me with all of being a human rights advocate. That is the lens that I bring to this work here today. So what do I know about Masa Amini? I know about what she dared to do, how she dared to dress. I know how she was treated, and now I know how she was brutally killed. And I know about the injustice of that act. I know that that is wrong morally, and that is wrong in terms of law. And that we need to do justice by her, and not just by her, but by all of the other women in Iran and all of the boys and men that are supporting her and dying for that cause. And that is what I dedicate to you today quite openly. That when we say Zan Zindagi Azadi, it means something. It has to mean something. For me, for the cabinet, for the prime minister, for every parliamentarian to do right by that cause and by all of you. this very issue. I'm going to speak with you honestly. You deserve honesty. The people who are, whose family members died on that plane deserve honesty. What I can say to you is that about the steps that we have taken, and I can talk to you about the steps we are hoping to take. What we have done is we've designated the Islamic Republic of Iran as a regime that engages in terrorism and systematic and gross human rights violations. That's important. What we've also done is banned senior regime and IRGC officials from Canada forever. Last month, we denied temporary residency to the former health minister. We've imposed sanctions. Currently, 362 individuals and entities have been sanctioned. Hamid, an unbelievable advocate, an unbelievable leader of this cause, has told me, Arif, I want to see sanctions of the force and the weight that you are applying to Russia applied to the Iranian regime. I agree with Hamid. That is the kind of focus we need. Yesterday we sanctioned six more people, including the head of the Supreme Council of the Cultural Revolution, who's responsible for increasing surveillance of women. Others include the IRGC, the morality police, its leadership, regime officials, elites, members of their so-called revolutionary courts. We'll continue to sanction more people. We've listed the regime under the Immigration and Refugee Protection Act, which means tens of thousands of members of that regime are now inadmissible. But about that chant you just heard, you just said, you just listed, about the signs that I'm seeing, about what I've been hearing all afternoon, I want you to know I'm registering it. I hear it. Melanie Jolie is hearing the exact same chants in Montreal. I'm sure the exact same chants are being heard in Vancouver with that large Iranian Canadian community that is there. We are working on a way to recognize the regime for what it is, a regime that spreads terror. We'll find a way to ensure that those that what we do does not unfairly affect those who may have an innocent association through no choice of their own with the IRGC. But please know the IRGC is within our targets and there is a path and we are committed to finding that path. We have helped secure the removal of Iran from the Commission of the Status of Women. We're pushing to establish an independent investigation into ongoing deadly violence against protesters. It troubles me greatly that 600 people have lost their lives in Masa's name. We can't let it be more than 600. We must bring this to an end. We will continue to listen to the voices of Iranian people. 
We're strengthening with dollars, $70 million, the ability to enforce sanctions. But now I want to speak to the family members of those who were lost on PS752. Thank you again for organizing this. I stand with you, our government stands with you. We promised that 2023 would be a year of action in the pursuit of justice. If there's anything I can do as the Attorney General of Canada and the Minister of Justice, it is promoting that sense of transparent accountability and justice for the victims of PS752. Know that that is a fundamental priority for me. What we've done in conjunction with Sweden, Ukraine and the United Kingdom, we've filed against Iran at the International Court of Justice in relation to the downing of the plane. We have made good on progress and preparing materials to take this case to the International Civil Aviation Organization. We're gathering the evidence, we're consulting with legal experts, we're preparing the case to maximize our chances of holding this regime accountable. We cannot bring back those people that were lost. I shared a moment with Hamid talking to him about his wife. Many of you lost spouses, you lost parents, you lost children. As a father and as a husband, I feel your pain. I can't imagine what you're going through, but know that your actions today, in some small measure, help to produce something out of a horrible tragedy. And that something needs to be accountability, and at the end of the day, a change, so that that flag that I'm, fl that I'm looking at can fly proudly in places like Tehran going forward. <laughs> what I think is most importantly, what I want to end on, is this basic idea about this anniversary and what it brings home. Masa's memory is not going to be forgotten. Those 600 people who have lost their lives protesting for Masa are not going to be forgotten. Those are martyrs in a cause. And if they are only observed in Iran and the rest of the world doesn't take notice, then the fault is on us. But I'm determined as the Attorney General and as the Minister of Justice, as a member at that cabinet table, when Justin Trudeau named me to this post, he didn't say, Arif, we're gonna muzzle you, you can't speak your truth. What he said is that you bring the same lens you have always brought, you bring that to the cabinet table. What I will report back to him on Tuesday at that cabinet meeting is about the people I've seen before me and the chance that they, that they provided and the opportunities and the demands that they made of me and that they are making of government. And I will ensure your voices are heard and that they are not forgotten. Merci, thank you very much for having me today. Thank you so much. I'd like to invite the Member of Parliament for Vidal Day, Mr. Ali Essassi. سلام دوستان خیلی خوشحالم که همه گیر شما رو میبینم میدونم که امروز حداقل سه ساعت زحمت کشیدیم بزرگواری کردیم تشریف آوردین اینجا برای یه مسئله که برای همه گیر ما بینهایت مهمه Allow me to start off by actually thanking Minister Verani As he indicated he was appointed the Minister of Justice approximately two months ago. And I can honestly tell you that on several occasions, he has reached out to me and said, Ali, these issues that are of concern to the Iranian community, please explain them in greater detail. So what I am trying to say is that this is a new minister. And he recognizes full well how committed each and every single one of us are to bringing justice to the people in Iran, amplifying their voices, and making sure that here in our country we are free, we are not harassed, and that we are not intimidated. به خاطر دردیست که بعد از پیس 752 هر کدوم ما دوچارش شدیم دردیست که در این یک سالی که گذشت در این یک سال تاریک میدونیم 
تو جمهوری اسلامی بالغ 600 نفر رو کشته و بالغ 23 هزار نفر رو در زندان انداخته همه ما متأثریم از همچین مسئله اما وجود شما عزیزان نازنین هفته بعد از هفته واقعا باعث دلگرمیه باعث دلگرمیه تمام عزیزان شجا در ایران و به شما قول میدم و همیشه قول دادم که در طی این یک سال در مورد مسئله محسا و تمام عزیزان شجا در ایران مکررن اون مسائلی رو که شما با بنده در میان گذاشتین تکرار کردم و در واقعا سعی کردم که خستگی ناپذیر باشم ولی وجود شما عزیزانه که اجازه میده که اینشالله هم تغییراتی در ایران شاهدش باشیم و هم تغییراتی در کانادا بدون همت بدون پشت کار شما همچین کاری عملی نمی بود ولی حتم دارم که با وجود همیشگی شما عزیزان حالا خواه در تورنتو در مونتریال در ونکوور به نتیجهی که می خواهیم می رسیم ممنون از همگی شما عزیزان Iran is a nation with a rich cultural heritage that rose over millennia from a foundation of unity and diversity. However, over the past 45 years, the Islamic regime has subjected ethnic and religious groups to persistent discrimination, persecution, and oppression. Ethnic and religious communities have long borne a bit of historic persecution, clinging to the hope of a future when they too can enjoy their right to freedom. Iran's diverse ethnic tapestry has been the target of systematic violence, assimilation, and discrimination. From Kurdistan to Balochistan, Gilan to Khuzestan, every corner of Iran yearns for recognition and their rightful, equal, and equitable place in the nation they proudly call Iran. Iran ethnic communities have been systematically targeted by the Islamic regime. While Iranians are taking to the street around the globe and protesting against the regime brutality and calling for a free democratic Iran, IRGC forces are getting ready to launch missile attacks or use kamikaze drones once again against the Kurdish refugee camp. Balochistan is facing similar atrocity by the, by the regime vicious security apparatus. The obsessed ethnic the oppressed ethnic and religious communities in Iran, along with millions of other Iranians in and outside the country, are seeking a future free for, for tyranny, longing for justice, freedom, democracy, and fundamental human rights. They're all stakeholders in the fight for free Iran. Despite the regime brutality, today we all stand united. From Zahedan to Gizeh, from Marivan to Mashhad, from Shiraz to Tabriz and Tehran, today our voices echo in harmony. Because 365 days ago on this day, the last day of Gina's life, we, the people of Iran, found each other again. We found each other in front of Castro Hospital in Tehran. We found each other behind a stone barricade in Marivan. And we find each other at the Friday prayers in Zahedan. And in every corner of every town, we found each other again. We marched together on the city of Toronto. We chanted together by the Victory Column by Berlin and by the Los Angeles City Hall. We embarrassed each other. Jen Jian Azadi, Women Life Freedom. Thank you, Rogine. I'd like to invite the member of Provincial Parliament of Ontario, Ms. Golsa Goldi Gamari. درود بر شما درود بر مردم ایران و درود بر روح محسا امینی My name is Goldi Gamari and I'm a member of provincial parliament من گلسا قمری هستم نماینده مجلس برای استان اونتاریو 
به مجلس اونتاریو خوش اومدید چقدر خوشحال شدم وقتی پرشماتون رو دیدم بالا ویوینگ I wish we could do that every year over there One day we will One day when Iran is free and the people of Iran are free we will raise the Iranian flag the real Iranian flag on that flagpole right there My friends Canada has become a safe haven for the terrorist and illegitimate Islamic regime in Iran. And I don't call it the Islamic Republic of Iran. I call it the Islamic regime in Iran because they have been holding the people of Iran hostage for 44 years. We should not allow Islamic regime terrorists to live in Canada. We need to kick them to be the voices for the people of Iran who are fighting to live in a free and democratic society. And as Iranians, we are religiously diverse, we are culturally diverse, we are ethnically diverse, and we are politically diverse. But there is one thing that unites us, and that is our desire for a free and democratic Iran. I now would like to invite the former Provincial Minister of Science and Education, Honorable Dr. Reza Moridi. Dostan Arjamand, Sarbaran Gerami, Hamatanan Aziz, my Amruz, Inja Jam Shodim, Bemona Sebate, Yeksadom Yekomin Sol Yade. قتل ناجب مردانه محسا جینا امینی فرزند کردستان و دختر ایران زمین به دست جلادان رژیم جمهوری اسلامی مستقر در زادگاه عزیز ما ایران امروز ایران در اقصانوات دنیا از اوکلند نیوزیلند گرفته تا پاریس در فرانسه از لندن در انگلستان گرفته تا تورنتو و واشنگتن لس آنجلس و ونکوور در شهرهای بزرگ و شهرهای کوچک جمع شدن تا صدای خود را بلند بکنند بر علیه رژیم منحوس جمهوری اسلامی و آدمکشی های اون و فساد مالی و فساد اخلاقی و انواع و اقسام فسادهای دیگری که این حکومت در عرض 44 سال استیلا بر اون زادگاه ما بر اون آب و خاک باستانی برقرار کرده صدای من را بلند بکنید دو سه روز پیش از این دوستان مجلس نمایندگان امریکا قانون محسا را به تصویب رساند بر مبنای این قانون اگر به تایید سنای امریکا برسد و جناب بایدن رئیس جمهور آمریکا ایسار رو لطف بکنن به ملت ایران و اون قانون رو امضا بکنن ورود علی خامنه ای و ابراهیم رئیسی به امریکا تحریم خواهد شد ما امیدواریم که کشورهای دیگر جهان آزاد من جمله کشور عزیز ما کانادا هم همین کار رو انجام بدهد ما از نمایندگانمون در پارلمان کانادا میخواهیم همچنین لایحه ای رو در پارلمان مطرح بکنند دوستان رژیم جمهوری اسلامی در داخل ایران و همینطور در صحنه جهانی اعتبار خودش را به کل از دست داده است این رژیم باید به دست ایرانیان در داخل ایران و ما 8 میلیون ایرانی که در اقصان نقاط دنیا پراکنده ایم برشیده خواهد شد و اون روز زیاد طولانی نیست یاد محسا جینا امینی و کودکان و نوجوانان و دختران و فرزندان ایران نه تنها در عرض این یک سال گذشته جان خودشون را از دست دادند بلکه در عرض این 44 سال حکومت ننگین رژیم جمهوری اسلامی در ایران 
زندگی خود جان خود رو در راه ایران از دست دادن هدر نخواهد رفت دموکراسی و آزادی در اون آب خاک استقرار پیدا خواهد کرد و اون روز روز طولانی نیست من از همه شما عزیزان اظهار تشکر و قدردانی می کنم که در اینجا حضور به هم رسانید تشکر مخصوص دارم از برگزار کنندگان این این حرکت علل خصوص جوانانی که تحت نام عاشقان ایران دور هم جمع شدند اینان واقعا عاشق ایران هستند البته همه ما عاشق ایرانی ولی اینها سمبل ایران ایرانیتن که بدون اینکه بخواهند خودشون را جایی مطرح بکنن زحمت میکشن کار میکنن و برنامه های این چینی برگزار میکنن که ما بتونیم دور هم جمع بشیم ایران ما پاینده است پاینده تر خواهد بود سرافراز باد ایرانیان در هر جای دنیا که هستند و زنده باد مملکت عزیز ما کانادا متشکرم and the beginning of the Women, Life, Freedom movement in Iran. For the past 12 months, the people of Iran, both inside and outside the country, have united in an unprecedented way to voice their anger and resentment, accumulated over 45 years of oppression and injustice. The regime of Islamic Republic of Iran, which from now on referred to as the regime, is once again resorting to murder, torture, and intimidation to quell anti-regime protests. The government forces have killed over 540 people, including 74 children, injured thousands, detained over 20,000 protesters, charged at least 105 people with death penalty and executed seven individuals associated with the Women Life Freedom Movement. We, as a group of Iranian healthcare professionals living abroad, stand alongside the people of Iran and will reflect their voices in any capacity, fulfilling our human and professional duties. Inefficient and poor government policies in the fields of environment, science, and economy have jeopardized the stability and well-being of society. The regime is systematically undermining the culture of medicine in the country by promoting anti-science propaganda under the name of Islamic medicine. Survival of the Islamic Republic regime in Iran will result in further casualties the dismantling of Iran's ancient culture and the demolition of its unique landscape. On the anniversary of Mahsa Jina Amini's murder, we once again, in unions, echo demands of Iranian people. Our demands are simple, and we make them clear to all governments. Number one, human rights violations. The regime has repeatedly violated human rights. We call on the United Nations to hold the Iranian government accountable to respect the demands of its people, including ending compulsory hijab, freedom from torture and inhuman or degrading treatment, abolishing the death penalty, unconditional release of political, ideological prisoners, journalists, and civil activists, ending threats and violence against the families of those killed, imprisoned, injured, or protesting against the regime, and ending various forms of gender, ethical, racial, and religious discrimination. Number two, gender apartheid. Women in Iran face gender apartheid. Women who resist compulsory hijab mandates are banned from schools and workplaces, 
are labeled with antisocial personality disorder and are forcibly subject to psychotherapy. We call on human rights activists and health organizations worldwide to hold the regime accountable for its repeated violations of women's rights and the misuse of psychological diagnosis to suppress women. Number three, censorship and repression by abusing technology. The regime uses surveillance cameras and technology purchased from other countries, identify the anti-regime protesters, and subject them to inhuman punishment. We call on all governments to ban the sale of censorship, repression, and torture tools to the Islamic Republic of Iran. Number four, internet access. Internet access is heavily regulated and censored by the regime. We call on our governments and international organizations to facilitate access of Iranian people to free internet. Number five, violence against protesters. The brutal suppression of protests by regime has led to numerous physical and psychological injuries amongst protesters. We urge democratic governments to support those affected by providing asylum and facilitating immigration. Number six, medical neutrality. Medical centers are forced to report the names and identities of injured protesters to the regime. Medical staff are prosecuted if they provide medical care to protesters. We ask international health and medical organizations to safeguard the neutrality of health care providers as well as confidentiality of patients in Iran. Medical providers must be allowed to care for the sick and wounded, and those injured must receive care regardless of their political affiliation. <laughs> Number seven, freedom of thought and speech in academia. Students and scholars are targeted based on ideological and political affiliations. Those who express free thinking are banned from academic institutions and face prosecution. We urge academic institutions worldwide to condemn the ongoing suppression of freedom of thought and speech by the Islamic Republic and assist Iranian students and scholars at risk with pursuing their academic career abroad. In conclusion, we call on the people, governments, policymakers, influencers, all around the board to hear once again the voice of the people of Iran and support them in their legal and human demands. A democratic government in Iran that respects the right of its people will contribute to peace in the region and the world. In the name and memory of Mahsa and all the victims of injustice, thank you. Please join me in welcoming Saba Zameni and Sina Mumtahan for their second performance. We hear you and together we shall build a future where your voices will ring out loud, proud and free. Woman life freedom. I'd like to invite the parliamentary security to the Minister of Foreign Affairs and the Member of Parliament. Mr. Rob Oliphant. Thank you, Matthew. It is uh, my responsibility, my privilege to thank you. And to uh, the organizers have been thanked, the Association of the Founders Association have been thanked. My job, I believe, is to thank all of you. And to tell you, it makes a difference that you're here. 
It makes a difference that for over three and a half years, people have been carrying the signs, the pictures of their children, their parents, their sisters, their husbands, their brothers, their wives, carrying those signs so that we will not forget. And I promise you, we will not forget. It makes a difference that you're here carrying the signs of Masa Gina Amini. It makes a difference that you are fighting for the people of Iran to have their aspirations, their hopes, their dreams realized in a fair, free, and democratic state. And it makes a difference that you keep persisting and telling our government what we need to do. You have our permission to keep demanding you have our permission to keep telling. You have your permission, our permission to keep telling the stories. Our government has acted, needs to act, and will continue to act to make a difference in the world because you are here. Because you are giving of your time, your lives, yourselves, your thinking, your hearts, and your bodies. It makes a difference. Thank you for being here. From the imprisonment of women protesting mandatory hijab on Women's Day of 1979 to the military elimination of Kurdish dissidents in the same year. From the summary executions of the 1980s to the violent suppression of the student movement in the 90s. From the killing and torture of hundreds during the Green Movement and thousands during the 2017 and 19 protests. From the willful downing of Flight PS752 to the brutal crackdowns during the Mahsa Jina Amini revolution, the Islamic regime's pattern of violence and oppression spans over decades. But the Iranian people's battle for freedom persists against a bloodthirsty regime that thrives on violence and corruption. Countless Iranians have sacrificed their lives for justice and liberty. Those brave Iranians may not be with us today but their voices echo through time and space with a resounding rejection of tyranny. We stand together exactly one year after Mahsa Jina Amini's murder by the Islamic regime, and our, flight shall and our fight shall continue. Regardless of religion or ethnicity, identity or orientation, political beliefs or affiliation, today we unite as the people of Iran. We shall persevere. We shall prove that Gina, Kian, Khodanu, Nika, Sarina, and so many others did not sacrifice their lives in vain. We stand here as a people who know what it means to lose our most basic rights and freedoms, and what it takes to regain them. We stand united in our ideals and vision of a secular and democratic future for the country we love for Iran, and that is a vision worth fighting for. Thank you, Tania, thank you, Lily, thank you, Ava, and thank you, Rajiv, for your wonderful presentations. Thank you, honored guests. Thank you, everybody, for standing together, helping to keep the memories of the victims of the Islamic regime alive. Thank you for standing with so many brave heroes on the streets of every city throughout, uh, through our country, Iran. Justice will prevail and freedom will be ours. Please join us to stand in respect for the national anthem of our beloved country, Iran. As همه شما برای حضور و حمایتتون متشکرم. خواهش میکنم در خاتمه دست به دست هم به احترام سرود ملی کشور عزیزمون ایران بیستیم.